Nation, hello, Lee Kemp here for another week on a podcast, as always, with both Ryan Boniface and Jose Neuer, who is keeping everyone who is early on TikTok entertained. If you want to join in each and every week, Tuesday six-ish, I would say, on the weeks we actually make it on Tuesday, just follow Joe on TikTok, J Neuer underscore Inspiration Nation, loads of content on there through the week, not just on recording days, but you get us early and live and can interact with us. Um, social media at listen to I and listen T O I N. You can follow us over there. We appreciate all the follows, um, and reviews, subscribes, all that good stuff on wherever you're watching us as well is all appreciated. I've got in a bit of a spill there before I asked, How are you doing? How are you both? Good, thank you. We're good. We're good, Lee. How are you? I'm good. Very good. Thank you very much for asking. This is what happens when I mix it up, so yeah, it all goes wrong and I get different things in different places. I listened back to us a bit this week on the last few and I've realised that I sound like I've got a cold every week no matter what's going on, so I might need to do a Joe and get a big old microphone. Oh, and Ryan, by the way, look at that microphone. Look at that microphone. Look at Ryan's yeah, microphone. Ryan keeps his kind of under wraps. You just stick yours in everyone's faces. I'm not saying anything to that. That's, that's, oh, I don't know where to go with that, Lee. I really don't. Hard accusations to deny. So... Who is in charge of the conversation for this week, guys? Well, you admitted it last week. So I've been editing the podcast last week and I already know because I was editing the podcast last week. That's right. And I already know half of what the subject is as well because you okay, told us what so it was. <laughs> what is what is the half of the subject then? How's that? About focus. It's about focus or something. Focusing on something, isn't it? Something like that. So picking up on last week's podcast, Ryan's awesome 21 Rules for Life, which was very good really enjoyed that one last week there's a couple of questions you asked things on which touched on an idea i already had lodged away in my head um i did some training the other week by the way and it was on like team psychology it's really interesting and it's given me three or four different ideas for other topics so i'm kind of set into mid 2023 now as far as topics go which is good but anyway yeah the idea i had already touched on a few things we talked about last week specifically there was number 19 ryan which obviously off the top of head, you can just tell me what was number 19. Correct. Learn oh, I can. something new oh. every day. Oh, you're I was going to give it a guess, but I don't think it would have been that. <laughs> so learn something new every day. Ryan, you talk, You in fact then jumped in and talked about me with my becoming a tradesman in the last year and talked about some plumbing that I did. We also talked a bit about smaller things, that this wasn't just big things you learn, but you know, it's your... Or a quick, I'll open my phone and Google where such and such a place is or what this is or why this looks like that. And, you know, there's lots of smaller things that we could probably be patting ourselves on the back with learning as much as the bigger things that we're doing. Some of the bigger things this year, which you did touch on a little bit and avoided talking about it, but I think it fits really well, is through the wonder of the internet and the access to technology and good content, I will say, you know, you have to be careful what you look for, but there's a lot of good videos out there. So I've been on a mass decorating project this week. I think one of you quipped earlier to me in our preamble that it might be finished by the time I get married next year. Fingers crossed it is. But we started off. That was me. September, October. <laughs> you look very proud of yourself as well. September, October time on redecorating two rooms, so living room, dining room, and doing the hallway at the same time. Um, and other than getting someone out to lay some floor for us, which has been a nightmare, which is not relevant to this podcast, but you guys had to hear my sad tale before this. Everything else, obvious bits, of, I've stripped all the skirting boards off, filled in holes on the wall. In the living room, there was like a, ra- a picture rail around the top of a room that's far too short for it. There was some Lot floating lights in the middle of the wall which I've taken out and replastered where they were, repaired holes in the wall where they were, put up new everything pretty much around the house, got it all painted, fixed things as I went. There was, you see if this background was up upon me, a door where it completely split in half and I reattached all the wood together. Loads and loads of stuff as I went. I'll put on new plugs, new plugs and new light switches everywhere, replacing the there were plastic ones there and they're now chrome ones that are on. Found a couple of boxes that had broken and needed replacing. Loads, loads of stuff. I won't read it all off, but there's a lot of stuff. And we did it all of our, ourselves. And most of this stuff I didn't know how to do. And I taught myself through the wonder of YouTube and Google how to do all of these things. And I've done what I would consider to be a more than reasonable job as far as everything. In fact, I'm going to say I did a good job as far as everything goes. I'm really pleased with how it all looks. 
oh, plastered the wall, by the way, as well. There you go. I added one in, which was a, a significant skill to learn. And I think, as I say, to a really good degree on how everything's been done. So I've been really pleased with it on the time and effort, but more so the skills that I've learned now in, in doing everything. So on that learn something every day, I didn't, you know, it's not like I did one thing each day, but there's been a lot of skills, big skills that are now in my bank through the necessity of having to do them. So that's what I was going to talk about on that one, which is almost a preamble, though, to what this podcast is about. And actually, it ties in, Ryan, with question 15, which I'm sure you can just reel 15 off the top of your head, even oh, if you were going to get God. 19 wrong. Uh, 15. Um, no, go on. Go on. Narrow down your focus bit by bit. Okay, okay, okay. And you both talked about your 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 view of this and i said i had a completely different view to the two of you which is part of what i love about lists and advice like that is all the different and completely legitimate interpretations you can take away from things like that so on narrow down your focus bit by bit ryan you talked about having a view in your, your binoculars far away of something you're aiming for and that over time you kind of focus in on that target or you get you get closer and closer to it. I think I'm kind of in the right ballpark there. And Jose was laser focused that everything you do is focused on your goal. So whatever you're doing ties into that, that you know, whether it's your hobbies or spare time or work or reading or learning, it all ties in on that thing that you are laser focused on, narrowing your focus. Um, both of which I really, really love both of them. My takeaway on that was that, it's about you splitting your plan down into chunks. So I would narrow my focus bit by bit. And this is where I was deliberate at the start. And I didn't want to bore and scare everyone off of me listing off a hundred different jobs I did around the house. Reminds me, Ryan, there's a pod, there's a family guy bit where, where Peter's doing a podcast about the hats and it cuts him just sitting there going, old lady's hat, baseball cap, pizza box on your head. I'm not cat. sure if I've seen that one. And he gets to the end and he's like, I think that's all the hats. And that's what I felt like I was doing. I'm like, <laughs> and that's all the jobs. Um, but the reason for doing that was it was big. There was a lot that's been done in this, this time period. Um, and I think it would have been very easy for me to look at how much we had to do and be like, I don't even know where to start. I don't know what we're doing. This is too much. What do we do? Blah, 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 blah. And I was very deliberate in my planning to break this down into jobs. So for me, and this is, you know, this is a technique I use. This is a very good outside of work example, but one I do in work as well, is that if, we, if there's a big project coming up, rather than looking at I'm here and I've got to get to here, I will break that down into steps. You know, I'm um, so I've probably told you this in work before. I know I've used it on the podcast before. My success is where, you know, am I, should I be on step two? Am I on step two? How is it going? Is how you measure that progress till you till you get to the end. And you probably have to tweak and adapt and change things on the way when you do it. But I would take that very big goal and break down. In fact, Joe, there was a day many years ago we had this. You had a big thing you wanted to do. And we we booked out a room and we spent a day brainstorming that into tiny little chunks and followed the little chunks and we made it happen. Yeah, I really um, that's one thing I really enjoyed about it was that it, it that 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 was the thing I really learned from that that journey is that you can have something big and just breaking it down becomes a lot more manageable because you just look at the whole thing like you said you just get overwhelmed and you think where do i start and that's the thing that always stopped me in a lot of my life actually going forward with anything because i just felt paralyzed so yeah i really did like that but and it's a really great exercise real time real life in a real situation which i thought was really good and i learned a lot from that a lot so thanks lee okay no, and that's that's what i'm i've done in real life with with this and there were things like I, ha I had to hang a door for example which i've never done before this was a part of the plan so before i got to the bit on the door and i'd, I'd start thinking i remind myself no i'm doing the whatever i'm doing taking off the skirts that's all i'm worried about today once this is done tomorrow i can worry about what i've got to do with the door so i wasn't distracting myself and going from tantrum stuff and i did i did have to be like conscious competent you say and remind myself of this but then got the door the door turned up little did i know you don't have holes for hinges to go in you don't have a hole for your door handle to go in the door isn't even the right size for the door frame because they're all different so then it was through the magic of youtube right how do i what's the technique to resize a door what tools do i need to resize the door right i now know what i need to do i've now got the tools many tools i've bought that i will only use once that are litter in my cupboard now and then I did that bit, you know, I resized it. Right, what do I do to create hinge? Taught myself, I chiseled in the little rectangle bits for the hinge to go in, was one of my more 
pleasing jobs that I did because I didn't really know how you did it before. But again, what's the technique for that? What do I do? How do I do it? Right. This and this is where I used my like eight or nine o'clock time in the morning or evening time or a weekend. You know, on a Saturday, I'd be like, right, I'm going to do this job and this job. And again, focus on what do I need? How do I do it? Do that bit of the job. Right. Tomorrow, I then worry about the next one, the next one, the next one. And some of that time might have just been researching how to do something. Some of it might have been getting the tools I need. Some of it's actually doing the work. Some of it doing the rework once I'm not happy with what I did on the work in the first place. But each one of those in little jobs, bit by bit, by bit, by bit, by bit. I'm now at a point now where we've done all of that work. And I know, like what you said right earlier on, we'll get someone, someone's coming in to lay floor, which we wanted to do everything else before we did that. I've then got my last job, which is I need to redo a skirting board. So I've got to buy new skirts and I know roughly what I need to do, but I don't know specifically what I need to do. But I know that there is some time coming up where I will research what I need to do, make sure I've got the tools and then do that, do that last bit of a job and then we'll be completed. And it was all by those little, little jobs along the way. And before I give my last little bit of I suppose, advice on this, because again, this is something I've done in real life to make something manageable like you said joe we talked about that before where we've done it we've done that exact thing ryan you're involved in multiple different programs and projects and problem solving at work so i suppose how does that resonate with you is it similar to techniques you use is it something that's completely alien to what you do open the floor so for me i'm at a point where or I was part of the moving cog of the step-by-step process that you'd set up. A lot of it was, a lot of the stuff I did was protected by Lee, if you like, because it was your master plan that had the step-by-step processes that did 5% of the time until you incremented up to 100%. What that did for me, I think, was give me a real understanding as to why it works so well. And uh, since the turn of this year, or in the last 12 months or so, you or I've been involved in a lot more wider or bigger stuff of my own that I've had to adopt this for. And if I hadn't have done this, I don't know how I would do it because a lot of these things look like big, big, scary goals or big, scary things that you have to get from point A to point B. But I think I think an asset that I've gained that's really strong, another one that I have to credit you for, my entire repertoire of knowledge comes from a fountain of Lee these days. But this is this has got to be quite painful for you right now. I, I'm sure you're loving every second of this, but uh, I just, I just, and there are, there are people I work with that also sit there and go, cool, how on earth are we going to get from here to here? And I say to them, I'm, I, I always say to them, just, just break it down. What's the first thing we have to do? And then what follows on to that? And what follows on to that? And if you can't establish the first step, then you work backwards from the last step. So we know this is point B. So what's point A, point nine? A point eight, A point seven, A point six, A point five, A point four, blah, 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 blah. I'm sure you can work it out. But then we work it backwards until we know what foundations we need to build the foundations, to build the foundations, to build the whole thing. And that's been massive for me because I just break these things down into smaller content subjects and just do what we can. Very easy to get lost in the vision of it all when you just need to kind of slow slow down the tempo and just make sure you reach the small gaps first. Yes. What do you think, Joe? Yeah, I, I, I just been writing stuff down because there's so much stuff in what you just said, Ryan. And uh, I think one of our big learnings was the, you know, what we, what Lee and I did together because I'd never built anything like that before. Um, and I had a bit, I always have like big visions. I do. You know, one of my things is I I can dream big, like I can dream like massive, like I can dream massive. But what I struggle with is how do I execute? And it's what Ryan's talking about. It's like, what is the first step? That is the key. What is the smallest step I can take, right, to get momentum? And that's what happened. You know, that's what happened with that big project. And ever since then, ever since that big project, I was really scared by the vision. I was scared, like, like Ryan said, you get, you get sort of caught up in it that you just get, you get either a bit scared of it. You said, where do I start? So it was about just like, and, and Lee would just, draw this up right what's the first step right we just do some bits and like a, a tracker and stuff like that it was very you know it was very very you know put an excel sheet he's got really possible for lot. but the most important lesson i learned from this was just take a step just a step that gets you in the right direction and you can only work with what you have 
you don't need all these massive great things like because i used to think oh well to build this i need this i need this um this amount of manpower or person power you don't what you do is you just start with what you have whatever you have in your resource you just start with that now and i can i can i can do two examples at the minute in my corporate job same situation i want to help the corporate place I'm building that build a coaching culture. And this is this is like a, another big one. So when I was Leo, I was doing it in one area. This is now I want this to go business wide. This is like the whole company, not just one area. So this is, in fact, even bigger. But what I've learned is you just have to take steps. And at the minute, I'm taking steps. I'm just taking steps. I'm getting asked questions. I'm responding to questions. I'm showing people what that would look like, how it would start to happen. But I could only do that by doing those small steps. What Lee was talking about doing what i can with what i have not thinking well we can't start this because we haven't got this or i can't start that because i've got that putting those excuses in the way which stops you living that that vision and also not being afraid to fail or if i try that what happens with that okay if that failed okay what did i learn from that why didn't that work and then pivoting that the second thing is the podcast we've built this podcast just off the back of lee saying well like lee came up to me and said well it was in the pub and we talked about this before and I was doing the one minute videos and Lee said, well, let, why, why don't you do a podcast? And um, and I was sitting there and, and actually someone, I was talking about this before, but someone had said probably about a month or two months before, why don't you do a podcast? I said, I've got no idea how to do a podcast. And I got almost like stuck and Lee came along and said, okay, we do a podcast. And Lee said, and I said, well, I don't need a podcast. And so Lee said, I don't need a podcast. But what Lee did, action Lee, <laughs> I'll tell you what I do, I'll go find out. And he went and found out and he went to the podcast. Then obviously Ryan got on board, and and now we are, you know, 194th episode in, um, and now we've got I've got there's there's a whole industry going on. Like every day I'm doing an edit, every day I'm releasing a daily video, I'm doing clips of the podcast. Ryan's recording it, Lee's tweeting away. You know, we've all got our real things. You know, we, we're uploading the audio. We, I've known you. Ryan prepares the audio. It's like a little industry we've got going, and that was built off just taking these little actions, and that's just naturally built into this thing that we built together you know and uh now we had we had like 100 129 subscribers though now we've got 700 and that's in the space of what three and a half years on tiktok i had one follower and now we've got i okay, 1400 right so that's the progress and that's really where i'm still so it's the steps it's just stepping just stepping step 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 and that's where i'm sitting lee and lee's gone off camera i'm so still here right. i'm still here oh, don't worry is it garlic bread yeah? I'm glad this reference that last week when I was just hiding and you I was gonna say I'm glad away. this is a thing. Lee Lee Garlic <laughs> Bread. It's garlic bread, it's like putting the tea, it's like putting the tea on whilst he's doing the podcast. Love I it. uh on an unrelated subject whilst Lee finishes garlic bread in, I mm. um I bought a new air fryer on Black Friday. I oh, what'd you get? Which one? A, 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 this ninja double basket one, like fully oh. expensive. And we're gonna use it for the first time after this. So uh oh, I'm brilliant. a little, a little bit excited. Uh, we're cooking in? In Chinese pork steaks and chips. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you what, I've got an air fryer. I haven't got the two drawer one, but I've got the, the one with the lid, the lid one, the, the sort of yeah, round yeah, one. Yeah, 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 That's yeah. That's the one yeah. I've got. They are really good, though. I've had, really I've had one, I've had an, like an oven type one for a while, if you like. Um, hmm. But we like the idea of being able to do two things at once. Um, yeah, it's got some cool, funky settings on it. So we're, uh, we're going to give Ooh. that a go. Let me know how that goes because. No, I do love it. Doesn't oven, require yeah. any warm up time, so it's cheaper on the energy bills and all this yeah. stuff and the oven and all that. So that'll be um it'll be good. You know, hopefully it'll be good. They are really good. Yeah, I mean I've got one, literally you just put them in and you just you're cooking away. You're just done. You just like it's like you like I did um steaks in hours the other probably what, three weeks ago, two or three weeks ago. And literally eight minutes. Eight minutes on the grill setting, boom. And it's like like you'd have to wait for the grill to like heat up. It's like it's it's grilling. It's like almost people are, people are quite scared of doing things like steaks and that because I think they're just going to ruin it. But as long as you they don't, there is a bit of trial and error. You might get it mm, wrong the first mm, time, but mm, that's yeah. the same with, I'm sure the first time when we were all younger, when we first started trying to cook something, I'm sure we messed up a bacon <laughs> sandwich or some cheese on yeah. toast or something when we, when we were younger. And this is no different. Lee's well, taking a, a long bit... time to garlic bread. I'll tell you I'm, what he does. I'm but, I, but I just, I just picked up something from what you said there. You know, like we're talking <laughs> about focus and Lee's talking about focus and stuff. Um, that thing about trying, like we didn't know how to cook right, but we learned to cook by doing it, right? We just we just started doing it, and we taught, we burnt stuff, didn't we? I mean, I've burnt stuff, you probably burnt stuff. Um, that's how we learn, right? Oh, all the all the chicken's not quite cooked. Oh, hang on, it's a bit raw, you know. 
we've all done it. Maybe I've done a fish finger and it's not been quite cooked, right? You know, I think the very first thing I ever did, I think, I'm trying to remember, what was the very first thing I ever cooked? I think it was, you know, like pretty like those pizzas, the, the deep pan pizzas they used to buy frozen and you just stick them under the grill. I think that was the very first thing. It's not, it's not really cooking, it's warm, warming up, but I, that, I was proud of that. I actually did it. I did it. And, and I remember being in sick form and mum and dad weren't there and I had to cook my own sort of lunch and it was like really proud of it. And it was lovely eating that deep pan pizza. Oh my God, I'm still so hungry now. Deep pizza. But can you remember the first thing you ever cooked? Ever? Yeah. I I, th- I used to help my mum cook on a Saturday night. That used to be like a lasagna yeah. or a spaghetti bolognese. But on my own, no, I don't think so. Oh, okay. Um, although I imagine it was probably one of those things because I'd done it so many times with mum in the room. I was like, oh no, I'm going to do it this week. But yeah, I mean, I you escalate, don't you? You go from you go from those types of things, get it wrong, and then you now I'm cooking Christmas dinner for the second time this year. So it's um brilliant it's all it's all very uh you know it's always it's, it, you can apply this to anything right learning to drive yeah. you have to do your first lesson and you have to learn the first stuff or learning to read you start with smaller books and you work your way up you don't open up a of you know of um war and peace and then you you don't start reading that do you, you have to start with the smaller stuff and work, work your way through so yeah i remember reading janet and john Janet and John was the ones I used to read, like those little ladybird books. I remember them, and now they've sort of come back, I think, big time. But yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't even remember like learning like to read. Like I just remember just oh, one day I'm reading, like. But like you say, it's those little steps, like you say, you know, teachers showing you, and then you train it. So again, it's, 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 there's a pattern here, isn't there, like Lee? So you talk about your focus is a pattern of going to find trial and error, taking the small steps, the focus. Yeah, I really enjoyed. Really kept ourselves on topic just can you can you hear me all right yeah just, yeah i think my i was the intent although we went off camera i was just going to carry on talking you know any diff not know any difference but oh. i had a technical issue there so i was talking away and you couldn't hear me so thank oh. you for covering guys but that was more of a technical issue than anything else we kept it, it on sub- we kept it breath. on subject we kept it on subject <laughs> i was i only went off camera so i could quickly do something but um I should have still been there. So thank you for covering through. And I'll just say as well that I've yet to experience anything done in an air fryer, but it's definitely on my list of things you should, to try. Of, of things that I know you're into, that I think that I think would, would be up your street. Oh, it's yeah. super quick as well. It cooks really quick. Like It is really quick. It's like ridiculously quick. It is, it is a pricey initial investment, mm. but you save money on your energy bills by return. So. Okay. I, I I can't I can't recommend them enough. I will definitely look into it before we wrap up then. And I completely ruined us for five minutes there with my technical issues. I was trying to be clever, and I think I just completely cut off my microphone one hundred percent. I think I'm on a different microphone here. In fact, as is the wonder of technology. So, um, last there was some really good bits there you said um, before I had my technical glitch. So I thank you on that, guys. And I suppose the last bit, and you kind of overlapped this a little bit, but it is it's the importance of being able to to pivot and change as well. So like I said, step by steps are important. And I always caveat this that it's not working aimlessly. Like you said in both your example, and I said with mine, I've got an end goal. I know where things should be, and I know the key steps along the way. But I don't necessarily know all the detail in between, nor do I need to know all of the detail. That's where that that step by step breaking it down approach comes in. But also I found stuff as I went. The common thing in house, I mean, I'm sure it's the case for lots of people who are in 100, 100 plus year old houses is that nothing is quite what it seems. So you open something or you remove something or you peel back something and you find all the horrors that hide underneath it. So wiring isn't like it should be. Or I had one bit, I I um, took off a skirting board and half the plaster came off the wall where it's just really poorly filled in with filler or I had a couple of radiator leaks when I started to, to find out you know, started to move stuff around, which had always been there. I just had no reason to notice it. It was just kind of running down the back of the pipe, for example, or wiring wasn't right somewhere, et cetera, et cetera. Loads of things like that. So actually, I came up with new jobs that I had to do that weren't originally part of the plan, but became jobs to get to the end result that I didn't know were there. So the plan had to adapt and it had to change. And there were things we were going to do that we ended up doing slightly different, either because we ran into an obstacle or actually it's, oh, now we've done this actually this would be better like this so the the headline goal was still redecoration and a lot of the you know this room this room this room but the more you get into the detail the more adaptive it becomes on actually the specifics of what you do and how you do it and why you do it and i just think that's as a part of all this kind of reaffirming a 
a lesson we like to talk about in breaking stuff down and keeping things small and focusing on the small picture as well as the big picture adaptation is key if you if things start to change if things start to move in fact if what you want starts to change as you move on it's not only okay it's actually advisable to adapt with that in fact if you don't adapt somewhere along the line chances are you've not been doing it right in some way or another i think that's i think you've got to accept that as part of the process and when you do you don't get thrown by it. it's not like oh there's something new what's going on you once you accept that that's what you've got to do as part of the process i think it again just makes it a lot easier and lots manageable breaks down the stress that comes with things so that yeah. was my last bit adaptation was my last kind of bit to throw in that I know it's part of the plan and I've experienced heavily during the last few months. Yeah. And do you know, say about adapting the vision and I, and I used to be, I used to be, I wanted to be literally, I want the vision to be like, as it is, like I didn't want it to change. I didn't, I, you know, so, but actually life does not go like that. And that's something I've had to learn because actually I used to get super frustrated because it wasn't going to the, I wanted this outcome and it was slightly adapting and I had to adapt almost like the vision because I slightly changed. That means my goal slightly changed because it's so big. It's a big, if you're thinking really big, I find that the big does change. Like there's bits of it that change. So you've got to be prepared to adapt. So what I've dialed it down to for me as a person is as long as I'm enjoying that and that vision still exciting, that's what's important, but it adapts, right? It's not as what you thought it was. It sort of it is, but it isn't. It starts to evolve as you evolve. And I think that's really important because I used to get so hung up on it's got to be this way or no way. And that's a you're too, you're too rigid. And of course, what happens to rigid things? They tend to snap. You know, you've got to be flexible. You've got to be able to adapt. And it's so important. And it's something that I definitely learned. And the last thing I want to sort of say before I'm going to hand the mic over to Ryan is this all speaks to a book. And uh, I read the book loads and loads. I've still got it. It's one of my, one of my key books called um, Stephen Covey's Highly Effective People. And one of, the, one, of the, um, one of the habits is begin with the end in mind. It's what Ryan was saying, what Lee was saying. You're having the big thing, but it's to work backwards. That's what you said, Ryan. Work backwards from the big thing. And yeah. then you get your steps. And it's so important. But the thing is, you can say and read these things, but you have to actually do it to get the learning. It's so important to, so if you've got your big goal or vision, or whatever, work backwards, take some small actions, and you will see it work in real time. That's the way you get the real learning. I, I was reading this stuff a lot, but it wasn't sinking until I actually started really doing it. And that was many, many years ago, but it does take time. You have to make that, you do have to take that step. And once you it's scary, but once you take it, you start to realize, oh, this is how it works. And then you start to make momentum. So, yeah, it's there. And, and I've recommended that today in my training session. I recommended the exact book, and it's been in my cupboard there 30 years. And I still refer to it as one of my original books that I absolutely love. Um, and someone actually downloaded the audio book, actually, it's an audio book that someone's downloaded in my train today they're going to download the other book so and apparently stephen covey who's passed away unfortunately bless his soul he's left a great uh legacy in the world uh he actually narrated it so that's a real good one but there you go there you go thanks lee Over to Ryan. yes no you've touched on everything i've got and we're desperately running over time so i won't i won't waste <laughs> any more i will show you so the, the the key three points of their takeaway Num number one is dream big i'll say plan big but it's dream big have big aspirations Number two is don't worry about the detail till you need to worry about it. And when you do, really focus on that and get it right, but only worry about it when you need to. And number three, I would say plan to adapt, but in fact, it is ready to adapt. It will happen. It's a necessity and it's part of the plan. And they're, they're my key three points that I think apply in work life, outside of work life, everywhere. And a, a little overlap, it all comes back to ultimately... A, it's how you succeed and you get things done and you're able to do them. And B, it's how you manage to stay calm and balanced and in the moment during the process, which, as we know, is my overriding theme to 2022. Yeah, Thanks, guys. It. Appreciate the input. Hopefully that has been some useful stuff for people and put some inspiration out there. As we are running through the time, I'll just say everyone out there who's supporting the show, if you're still with us now, you absolutely are. So please just recommend friends and family wherever you are listening and watching. Hit the subscribe button, hit the review button. That is what really, really helps us. And follow us on socials at listen to IN on Twitter, at listen to IN. Um, loads of new followers going on there. We always do follow back and try and post as regularly as we can. And Joe, J Noyer underscore Inspiration Nation. He is everywhere and he does loads. He is the engine behind what we do. So loads of great stuff to follow. And inspirationnation.org.uk, merchandise, coaching service, all that good stuff over there as well. And I think that just leads me to count us down. I will say three, two, one, Inspiration Nation. 
catch you guys, catch you guys, guys later. later. <laughs> Let me know what your biggest takeaway is from this conversation. I'd love to know. Put it in the comments below and I'll respond to every single comment because that's the commitment I make to you in this community. Also, don't forget to subscribe right over here because we need you to build this inspiration nation community to get the podcast out there and to help other people for free. And also don't forget to hit that bell right over here because if you hit that bell, then you're going to know when another videos go live. And don't forget to check out these videos right here next to me because those are other podcast episodes that can really help you out. I really, really appreciate it. And lastly, don't forget out to check the newsletter. The link is in the description below. That's where I can talk directly to you without through the YouTube, throughout the social, because you can have a direct communication channel with me through the email and you can get to know everything that's going on with Inspiration Nation, ask me questions and even give me suggestions on what you'd want us to talk about next. So I'd love to see you in the next video. So please click on those links. Please follow through. Please let's get this community building. I appreciate you. So until next time, I'll see you in the next video, Inspiration Nation, and I'll catch you guys later.